just read a, a book release party for my my new book. Little explanations needed. I was uh, I am a Vietnam veteran, and it's taken me 55 years to figure out how to get Vietnam out of my head and onto a, onto a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> the fortunate or unfortunate thing is, is I wrote one book. I've got two sequels to that one already. Uh, when I started writing, it just kind of opened up and things started coming off my chest and I just was able to bring out everything I was thinking of or things that happened to me over there. Little um, uh, information first. I was a crew chief on a helicopter. I was in the Navy. Um, I was assigned uh, to the Marine Corps while I was there with uh, two other Na two Navy pilots. And uh, we, was, we were scheduled to fly there for the next 24 months. Our duties were high-risk rescues. And uh, we flew day and night. And I don't know if how many of you know, but the nighttime missions were without the aid of uh, um, night vision like the guys have today. So we literally flew by the seat of our pants. And the only armament we had on board the helicopter was a, a 50 caliber machine gun, which, which is, was part of my job. Um, and with that, I'll just get on my story here. It's called that there's no safety even under base hooches. Taking the so-called high road is for those who can afford not to wade knee deep in the crap. That was my job, knee deep in it. Hoping that I may have strength to last another hour, day, or year to endure the house of Leo rising. It's another dark and rainy August and I'm tired of being, being the wasted human potential put in these positions of great danger, and bleak are the scars that I try to erase with cheap drinks that only make me sick. Everything aches, ex especially words and letters that are so hard to write and, and never to be mailed. My anger in its pure state was measured by the way I felt implicated in the war and how that made me feel vulnerable to the death that was all around me, like I was some part of the reason why I was there. Yet the feeling of guilt for doing what, I ne what needed to be done didn't really creep into my soul until later. Remembering the whispering and goosebumps that crept along my skin and the nights I slept with a loaded pistol in hand because a voice in the wind that warned me of impending danger. By the, ton by the time the sun came up, I'm tired and working on my last frayed nerve and somehow I dragged myself through another day and to another night of hearing things that were not there until I could no longer care, care about this life and gave in to the call of sleep. Many nights I slept curled up on the deck of my helicopter because I felt safer there. And fear, fear is waking up one morning and finding a flower at your feet and not knowing who put it there when they could have just as easily have killed me. And I wonder if it was her, the one who whispers in the wind. Thank you. So I'm in denial that it's winter already. <laughs> so this is a fall song. I'm sure many of you have, have seen the, the contests they have at the county fairs for who can grow the largest pumpkin. I saw a story in the newspaper last year about somebody who was growing for one of those contests, but he had bigger plans. <laughs> Some folks grow for prizes, some hope for greater glory. Name carved in record books, a chance to tell this story. Me, I have my own ambition, start an annual tradition, hollow out my giant gourd, climb a boy and go out fishing and sail my pumpkin boat across the bay. Don't know if it'll float, but I will find a way. Ropes and boards, seed and rudder, hit your motor, hit the water, sail my pumpkin boat across the bay 
When frost is on the grass And leaves are painted orange And the blue of a morning sky Could wash away your sins I'll head down to the harbor And on that blessed day I'll sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Don't know if it'll float But I will find a way Ropes and boards, seed and rudder Hit your motor, hit the water Sail my pumpkin boat across the bay I start in early winter Sorting through my seeds Check my records Choose the ones best suited for my needs Plant them in the spring Tend them through the summer Come the fall, pick out the one I hope will be a winner and I'll sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Don't know if it'll float But I will find a way Ropes and boards, seed and rudder Hit your motor, hit the water Sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Don't know if it'll float But I will find a way Ropes and boards, seat and rudder Hit your motor, hit the water And sail my pumpkin boat across the bay Sail my pumpkin boat across the bay. And he did. Pendulum swings back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The pendulum swings back and forth, and it's taken me for a ride. Pranced right through the 50s on a leash of law and order. Yet enjoyed getting away with everything I should not have. Spiraled through the 60s as religion ceased to rule. Truth was transition and beauty favored the fool. Ah, but now the pendulum swings away from merriment and laughter. Or you might slow it down in a nearby bar with a glass of rye and water, but not for long. As clouds turn stormy when the wind has its way, charcoal gray in the midst of winter, the banshee cries, a dear friend dies, you curse the fates that sent her. When straits get dire, you might gaze into fire 
pray to one who owes a favor? Should they stand and deliver an arrow to your quiver? You may have power to be your own savior. The pendulum swings back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The pendulum swings back and forth, and I'm heading for the other side. Thank you very much. That was called the pendulum. I think it was Chris Lee who said he was a boy who asked why a lot. This is a poem about my son who is similar. It's called Hungry. Yes, a preteen, too, knows something of eternity. It comes mid-morning one Tuesday in autumn. The trees along the highway shiver, slough off their last leaves while he sits here, cross-legged, opposite the wood stove, staring through flames and blackened logs. We have covered particles, the quantum realm, Mormonism, and the Big Bang, questions that break out, reach, Reduce. Scratching under his Red Sox cap, he considers an edge to the universe. Like one of Daniel's friends, he walks in places fearless, ready, remains defined though he is licked by fire. Drawing his eyes away from Ash, he looks across the room to ask, can I have a snack? <laughs> Thank you. It's called Cancer. It's not as if every day you can taste your own death like a breakfast sandwich, handle its window dressing, the crinkle wrap and pepper packet to tear open with your teeth. After all, you're on your way to work, Spill coffee on your quad as the car in front stops short for no reason you can fathom. Fingers fumbling the strip of plastic lid you try to bend back while eyeing the McMuffin beside you on the passenger seat. It's as ordinary as sitting at the red light in rush hour all brake lights and backs of heads, and you think maybe the light will change once or twice before you move an inch off the recliner while the infusion of saline and unpronounceable chemicals completes. Your spouse drives you home past where you used to work, and everything moves with purpose and incomprehensible speed at the bus stop, at the intersection, and along the pedestrian walkway, people with backpacks or with headsets are on important calls, while you, no longer capable of the driver's seat, pink plastic pan between your legs, just want to linger longer in this life, make it home to the dog who sniffs with no recognition the strange smell that emanates from your pores. You march back and forth to appointments in uniforms that still have the outline of the soldier you used to be your purple heart on your sleeve as leaves fall from trees like little paratroopers urging you on your own heroics to arrive on time and smile over small talk with the oncology nurse whose job it is to insert the needle into your chest port to administer the napalm bomb solution to the cancer 
but you wonder what's happening or how you got here and watch pieces of your former self, drasp draft horse strength and suits of armor, casual acquaintances, family squabbles, professional responsibilities, ignite into a mushroom cloud and then settle on charred ground. Days on end, you watch out windows, uplifted by the glory of familiar oak trees, changeable skies, and three hawks who circle the lake each day with your spirits under wing, while what's left of spring pushes up new shoots the wild rabbits love you for. This is my wife, Iowata Schneider, used to come here quite regularly. And I was looking, the other day I was looking for some paperwork and I came across a book that she had written. Um, I think she was working on haiku. And it, it's an unfinished one, but um, it seemed to, to go well with what's going on now. And when she would read a poem, I would stand behind her and play the flute. Well, I can't do the two at once, so I'll do one and then the other. Snow softly covers earth, home fires burning bright, love blankets, long winter's shadows hide little people's singing, joyous gifts. Winter, ice cold, empty landscapes, teaching us balance, which you know, having to do with the uh, Thanksgiving season and the weather changes and all that stuff, it seems like we're in a we're in this thing where it's the the yin and yang. Uh, sometimes one would run over the other, and then just goes back and forth. And what I I play the flute. I don't really play anything in particular. I play whatever comes to me, and there's I think there are stories in it, but I don't know where they come from. Happy Thanksgiving. Life is full of surprises. Life is a, sometimes gives one a second chance. And in my case, I'm so pleased that I was able to recognize that a second chance is a time to start fresh, afresh. Boxes and cupboards 
filled with life's rights and wrongs. My crow's feet reflect those good days in the sun. My frown furrow show where some damage was done, and my sweet smiles crease my cheeks, reveal the joys deep within. Quarrels and lemons. The dance in my chain. I'm slowing down, walking beaches and fields. Take the long way around, finding wonderful things. Times remember many of life's lessons learned. When I look in the mirror, I see how time has turned. Taking my time, knowing life won't slow down. I'll follow that line from Adam on down. I'm gonna live for today. How time has fled My path shows the way There's a clear way ahead My path shows the way There's a clear way ahead Thank you very much. And I think I'll end with this very short poem, um, which I wrote. Those of you who are writers in the audience will understand. Sometimes you just you sit down and the thing comes very quickly and it's short and that's what it is. Um, and I don't know, about a year ago, I was thinking about Aretha Franklin. Um, and, I, you know, there are people, in, in at least in my orbit, who uh, have, are so instrumental to my self-conception, the city's self-conception, the country's self-conception. She was one of those people. So I wrote this trying to figure out, like, how do I talk in any coherent way about Aretha? Um, and I'd heard on VH1 years and years ago this English woman, they had one of those shows about Aretha, and this English woman in this wonderful sort of voice said, um, the voice of God, if you want to know, is Aretha Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that really struck me, and I will never forget it, because I thought that is probably the most truthful thing I've heard in a long time <laughs> for me. So this poem is titled, The Voice of God. It's a poem for Aretha. When she opens her mouth, our world swells like dawn on the pond when the sun licks the water and the jay garbles, the whole quiet thing coming into tune. The gnats, frogs, the dandelion pollen, the pebbles and leaves, the whole world of us sitting at the throat of the jay, 
dancing in the throat of the J, all of us on the lip of the J humming doo-wop, doo-wop, doo. Thank you. This is a guitar solo inspired by a Cheryl Peralt poem. Thank you. 